This is a video on the IOTA two-step strategy, benign descriptors and adnex only. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. In this talk, we're going to describe the IOTA standardized language, risk models, two-step strategy, an example with management and a quick summary. Predicting the risk of malignancy in adnexal masses is so important. You might be able to diagnose ovarian cancer earlier and enable women with a malignancy to have surgery in a dedicated oncology center. You can triage women with benign pathology to benign gynecology for potentially conservative management or minimally invasive surgery. The report really matters whether the lesion is benign or malignant. In the past, we would report a mass as either being a simple cyst or a complex cyst. But all these ones on the right are complex cysts, so the, the term is meaningless. Can we do better? Using IOTA language, we can. We can describe a mass as either normal or functional, benign, or whether it's malignant if it's borderline, invasive, or metastatic to the ovary. First, we need to standardize our terminology. The IOTA group gave us a language in their terms and definitions of adnexal pathology. This was all developed using transvaginal ultrasound. Using the terminology, we will describe an adnexal lesion as to how many locules there are and if there's a solid component, what the cyst contents look like, whether there are any papillations, what the vascularity is like, and whether there's shadowing and ascites. Locularity. This is a unilocular cyst. It is a single locule with no solid component. If there is a solid component, it's now called unilocular solid or unilocular with solid. This uh, cyst has more than one locule, so it's called a multilocular cyst with no comp solid component. This one is multilocular solid because there's more than one locule and a solid component, so it's multilocular solid or multilocular with solid. This is a solid mass, and even a solid mass is allowed a cystic component, but this should be less than 20% of the overall mass, and that makes it solid. Then we look at the cyst contents, whether there are no echoes, low-level echoes, ground glass echogenicity, it's just denser, hemorrhagic or mixed. Solid material and papillations. A solid component is a structure that has echogenicity suggestive of tissue, but the white ball of a dermoid is not solid tissue and blood clot or mucin is not solid tissue. A papillary projection is a protrusion of more than three millimeters in height from the cyst wall. This also counts as a solid component. And if it's less than three millimeters in height, it's called an irregularity. Irregular means an irregular internal wall and or an irregular outer contour of a solid lesion. So here we can see a cystic component with little angles, that's irregular, and uh, an irregular outer contour. This is an example of a papillation. It's more than three millimeters in height. And this is the solid component of a mass which is not indenting the cyst wall and is not a papillation. So all papillations are solid, but not all solid material is a papillation. Vascularity score, we use color Doppler. I usually start at 0.6 kilohertz and then drop down to 0.3 to make it more sensitive if necessary. At 0.6, you get a velocity scale of 3 to 6 centimeters per second, and then you adjust the Doppler gain to just below artifact level. If you can find no flow, even going down to 0.3, that's a color score 1. If you really have to look for the color, but there's a little bit, it's a color score 2. If you turn on the box and the flow is just there, that's a 3. Or if there is strong flow, either in one area or all over the mass, then that is a four, strong color. So that's a one, no color is a one, a bit of color is a two, moderate is just there when you turn it on, and strong color is in one area as shown here. 
Shadowing behind the mass is something we actively have to look for, and it can be dense shadowing, as in this example, or it can be rather fine, so look carefully. Ascites is defined as fluid outside of the pouch of Douglas, i.e. above the level of the uterine fundus, as in this example, ascites. So we've used the standardized language from IOTA, and now we can use their risk models, simple descriptors and adnex, and that is a two-step strategy. But what are these models? Simple descriptors. Simple descriptors is basically pattern recognition, because half of all adnexal masses are usually instantly recognizable. Um, they have to be less than 10 centimeters in size, because that's the resolution of the TV probe. And they basically describe an endometrioma in a premenopausal woman, a dermoid in a premenopausal woman, a simple cyst or cyst adenoma in, an, in a woman, either pre- or postmenopausal, and other unilocular cysts, including physiological cysts and hemorrhagic cysts in pre- or postmenopausal. There is a simple descriptor which is malignant, but we're not talking about that now. We're only going to use the benign simple descriptors. So this was published recently, and again, there are four benign descriptors defined like that. So I'll give examples of each. This simple descriptor is a unilocular cyst. It's one locule. There is no solid component. Ground glass echogenicity, less than 10 centimeters in a premenopausal woman, and this is an endometrioma. In this example, this is a unilocular cyst. There is no solid component, but there is mixed echogenicity with shadowing less than 10 centimeters in a premenopausal woman. This is a dermoid. Another simple descriptor is a unilocular cyst, no solid component, regular walls, anechoic cyst contents, less than 10 centimeters. This is a simple cyst or a serous cyst adenoma. And the last simple descriptor is a unilocular cyst with regular walls, no solid component, less than 10 centimeters, and this is an example of a hemorrhagic cyst. So half of the masses uh, can be recognized using simple descriptors, benign simple descriptors, but if they don't apply, then use ADNEX. The ADNEX risk model was published in 2014 and it describes six ultrasound features and three clinical ones, and these go into an algorithm. The ultrasound features are the maximum diameter of the lesion in any, in any orientation, any plane. Then the largest measurement of the solid component, a single one, the largest single one, is the proportion of solid tissue. The number of locules, if it's more than or fewer than 10, the number of papillations, if it's uh, less than three or one, two or three. Presence or absence of acoustic shadowing. Presence or absence of ascites. And then we need the patient's age and whether she was scanned in an oncology centre or other. The CA125 test is optional. So in this example, this patient's 43. She came with pain and uh, unscheduled bleeding on the pill. And this is a little video clip of one of her ovaries. So when I'm uh, describing this using IOTA language, I would say it's multilocular solid. You have more than one locule there. There's the other one. And there's a solid component. So it's multilocular solid or multilocular with solid. There's fewer than 10 locules. I can see two. The maximum diameter of the lesion was 82 millimeters and the maximum solid component 32. Low level echogenicity more than three populations, you'd have to measure each one, making sure it's more than three millimeters in height. Shadowing, you can see some shadowing there, minor vascularity, as not seen here, and no ascites with a normal CA125. You can then use the model either on your uh, desktop or on your phone, and when you then enter the data, um, the age of the patient, uh, she was 43. Yes, she was scanned in an oncology center, the maximum diameter of the lesion was 82, maximum solid component 32, uh, not more than 10 locules, uh, more than three papillations, yes, acoustic shadowing, no ascites, and a CA1, you don't need this, but it makes it uh, a little bit clearer, I'll tell you later, and you hit calculate and agree, and then this is what it looks like, and I'll show you what this means. 
the at next result always comes up with the ch chance of it being benign and the risk of it being malignant. And these two have to add up to 100. We are interested in the risk of it being malignant. Um, risk of it being malignant is said to be 27.4, but it's not an actual percentage. So you have to choose a cutoff and we choose 10%. So uh, if it's over 10%, we say it's malignant. Then we can see that the risk of it being malignant comprises of the risk of it being borderline, stage one, stage two to four, or metastatic to the ovary. And in this particular model, it says, yes, it's malignant because it's more than 10%. And the highest one is the borderline. So it says it's malignant, it's borderline. You can also use patient specific and relative risk. And again, you can see that uh, the highest risk is for borderline. So in this model, the ADNEXT model says that this is malignant and it's a borderline malignancy. It was removed and it was indeed a borderline serous tumour. So what is the two-step strategy? The two-step strategy uh, was published in 2022 and it stated that if the benign descriptors are applicable, then there's a less than 1% risk of malignancy. If they're not applicable, then you use the ADNEX score with a CA125. It gives you a very good test. Uh, and they go on to show that using a 10% risk threshold, uh, the sensitivity of diagnosing ovarian cancer is 94% um, with overcalling some benign lesions as malignant. If you go up to 25% cutoff, then you will diagnose fewer ovarian cancers, uh, but you will describe more benign lesions as benign. There's always a trade-off in these. But so we use 10%. So how to use the systems? You do the scan, look at the mass, see whether it fits uh, any of the four benign simple descriptors. If it doesn't, then we go for ADNEX and we work out the risk of it being malignant. So using this example, I'll show an image. We need to describe it using IATA language, then use benign simple descriptors. And if it doesn't fit any of those, use the ADNEX score. So with the ADNEX model, remember that there are a few ultrasound features we absolutely need. Maximum diameter of the lesion, maximum of the solid part, how many locules, how many populations and shadowing. In this case, the patient was 64. She presented with some very worrying symptoms and a normal CA125. Um, in her scan, you can see this mass and I described it as 152 millimeters irregular multilocular solid lesion or multilocular with solid because the, uh, there is more than one locule and there is, uh, it comprises more than 20% of the overall mass. So it's not solid, it is multilocular solid. The maximum solid component in a particular measurement was 55 millimeters, fewer than 10 locules, no papillations, strong vascularity, no shadowing, no ascites. So you have to think, does this fit any of my simple benign descriptors? Uh, and no, it does not. It's too big uh, and it, it's not a unilocular cyst. It's multilocular solid. So then we apply ADNEX, and when I put this data into the ADNEX calculator, the risk of it being malignant was 80.8%. And then looking at what it would predict, it would be either borderline or stage one. And so in this case, this was removed and it was a stage one granulosa cell tumor, an ovarian malignancy. So management is another thing we can, um, we can help in with ultrasound. Uh, this statement was published in 2021, and these are international consensus statement on the diagnosis of ovarian cancer. Um, and what they say is that you do an ultrasound, and if it's not normal, you have the ultrasound uh, repeated by expert, or you use the ADNEX model. The ADNEX model is like having an expert in the room with you. And then you can use a traffic light system. If the ADNEX score is less than 1%, it will be benign and this patient can be followed up in a benign service. If the ADNEX score is between 1% and 10%, um, this patient can be seen by a general gynecologist. If the ADNEX score is between 10 and 50%, this patient needs to be seen by a gynecologist. And if it's a high risk of malignancy, more than 50%, again, the patient needs to be seen in gynecology. And uh, ORADS is basically a reflection of that. 
Um, in, uh, in the UK, we use ADNEX to describe the, uh, the, the category for the, the ADNEX score in the same traffic light system that you just saw in the international paper. And then it can give you management. So in the case that uh, we just saw, we had an ADNEX score of 80.8%. If I put that in here, 80.8%, that's a high-risk patient and she needs to be managed by gynae oncology. So how to use the systems? If you do the scan and you see an abnormal ovary, go for benign simple descriptors. If it doesn't fit one of those four descriptors, then you um, work out the ADNEX score and then you use ADNEX within the ORADS chart to give you the management. So in summary, we have stopped using the word complex cyst altogether because it doesn't mean anything at all. Using IOTA language and using risk models, we can predict the histology of a lot of these and certainly say whether they are likely to be benign or malignant. So use the IOTA language, benign simple descriptors, then add next and use ORADS for management. Thank you.